Hello everyone and welcome back to my journey of creating a city builder game from scratch using my own engine and this week I'm going to be working on the first actual city building mechanic which is allowing the player to place roads. So the road system is probably going to be one of the more complex systems in the game but to start with I just want to implement the most basic possible version of it that I can. So over here I've been planning out a kind of overview of the system. So up the top here we've got the placement tool. This takes in the user inputs and allows the player to choose where they're going to place a road. Then the road network is basically just a representation of the entire road system in the code. The mesh updater is then in charge of updating the actual 3D models of the road, adding and removing vertices when necessary. And then of course the renderer has the job of actually displaying the roads on the screen. So I thought I'd start with the rendering process for the roads, so I've just been implementing that and setting up a very simple shader program. And um, I thought it would be best to start with the rendering so that I have something visual to look at on the screen which will make everything else a bit easier to test. So you can see that it's working here, rendering this simple test mesh. This is just something that I loaded up from Blender. So that's all working nicely. The next thing that I'm going to be implementing is the memory management system for the roads, because whenever you want to render something, you first need to store all of its vertex data in video memory. So I'm planning out a system that's going to store vertex data for each section of the road in memory and it's also going to keep track of where each section is stored because obviously the road mesh is going to be constantly updating but it's going to be added to it and removed from it all the time. So for example if the player wanted to remove the D section of the road here this system is going to know where in memory that's stored and it can therefore update the relevant vertex data in memory. I've just finished implementing and testing the new mesh editing system. So I've got a mesh here to test it on, obviously a very, very simple mesh, but it's a mesh nonetheless. And uh, I can now edit this mesh by adding bits and removing bits from it. And um, the important thing to remember is that this is still just one single mesh that's being edited. And this is going to allow me to render large sections of the road network in one go, because it's going to be just one mesh, so I can render it all in one draw call and the reason I want to do this is because it's more efficient than rendering every single individual tile of the road separately. So I'm going to stop for a quick break now, get outside for a bit, enjoy the nice weather because we don't get that much of it here in Hamburg. And then when I get back, I'm going to implement some better looking road meshes. This afternoon I'm going to be working on generating the models for the different road sections and I've decided not to make the models in Blender. I'm actually going to be generating the vertices for these models in the code uh, for reasons which I'll talk about later. And first up I'm going to get started by generating the model for the simple straight road section. So I've just finished generating the model for the straight road section which wasn't particularly tricky. As you can see it's a very simple mesh so it was fairly easy to calculate all of the positions for the vertices, but I can now give you an example of why I wanted to generate the models in the code as opposed to making the models in Blender. So first of all, it makes it very easy for me to change details about the road model, such as the road width or the pavement width or the colors. So if we have a look in the code, these are the road details that I'm currently using to generate the model, and these are just widths and colors. And if I comment these out and use these slightly different road details instead and go ahead and run that you can see it generates a completely different looking road so this makes it very easy for me to tweak the designs of the roads without having to edit loads of different road models plus it allows me to generate different types of roads because at some point i'm going to want to have different road types in the game and this allows me to do that without having to make any more models also, once I've got all these different road types, they're going to be able to connect together with each other and there are going to be so many different combinations of ways that they can connect together. Um, I just didn't think it would be feasible to try and make a model for every single permutation. Good morning everyone, it is 8 o'clock on a very nice sunny morning. And my plan for today is pretty simple. I just want to finish generating the models for all the different road sections. Mm -hmm. 
It has taken quite a long time and a lot of effort, but I finally got the curved roads correctly generating in the code, and you can see the fruits of my labour here. So to generate this, I first generated the four curves using a little bit of maths, and I then worked on a method to find the best way of creating triangles between the curves, which then created the surfaces, and then finally I just had to generate the quads along the side of the pavement. Uh, and that bit wasn't too tricky. And as before, just by changing a few numbers in the code, I can create all sorts of different curved roads, and uh, I can even choose how high or low poly the curves are, as you can see from these two examples here. So very glad to have finally got that working, and uh, I'm gonna stop for a break now to have some lunch, and today I wanted to cook something a little bit interesting, um, a recipe that I saw from Jamie Oliver recently. Just finished generating two more road section models, and these two were probably the most complex of the lot, although it actually wasn't too tricky in the end because I could reuse a lot of the stuff that I'd written for the curved roads um, for generating all of these curves, and then I just had to mirror them in the X and Z axes to create these new road sections. Last up today I just created two more road sections, one of which is a road that's not connected to anything, so when you first place your first road tile into the world, it will look like this, and then the other one that I made was this, which goes at the end of roads that aren't connected to anything. Apart from that, I was just uh, tidying up some of the generating code to make it all look nice and cute, but that's pretty much all I'm going to do today, and I'm just going to head off into the city to meet a couple of friends this evening. So today I want to try and tie the whole road system together and actually allow the player to place roads into the world and have them connect up nicely. And to start that, I'm using the grid system that I implemented last time to work out which grid square the user is currently mousing over. And if the player clicks, it then places a road section into that grid square. And for now I'm just placing the straight road section, but obviously the next step is to work out which road section model I should be placing. So at last the basic road system is now completely working and you can see that when I place a road tile into the world it now correctly chooses the right road section model to use and it also notifies the four neighbouring grid squares so that they can also update and connect to the new road section. Obviously there's still loads of stuff to improve for the road system in the future um, for example, I should be able to drag and place long sections of road at once. Maybe it could even show a preview of the road before you place it. Um, obviously, road markings are still missing, different road types. Maybe I could even have some more complex stuff like bridges and roundabouts. There's loads of stuff that I want to add in future iterations. But for now, I just wanted to get the absolute basics set up, and that is now working. So that is pretty much going to be it for this week. Next time I'm going to be moving on to the save game system and then placing buildings, and then after that comes a lot of the really interesting stuff. Before I finish this week, I just need to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Alexander Chavez, Sean McCrory, Alberto Spina, Miguel Diaz Rivas, Leandro Di Pietro, Claudio Dimitru, Timothy Gibbons, Fred Mastro, Marek Mikolajcek, Andrew Witt, Thomas Johnson, Connaughton Adventures, and Hagen Vingard. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.